morning. Good day. How are you this beautiful day? Isn't this so beautiful morning? Very. Hey, Seapost, how's this? That's an awfully elegant pose, but is all that elegant necessary? And why not? I represent air checks, don't I? Yeah, I put your shop or a hardware store for perfumery. That means beer, beer. We're stylish. That's it. With a quiet dignity. Yes, and we get good to the bar pass right. That's right. When I ride my bike, people see what air checks like. So I think it's very important that I look my best. And how many people have run over today? Not one. Oh, well, that's early. Here comes Miss Ray. Oh. She spent the night with Mr. Kodak. Again. They always kiss goodbye at the new chair. Then she walks around the block to make us think she's going home. Well then marry me, and I'll quit my job. No, I'm afraid you're really not quite old enough. I'm catching up. You know, this word I've always used to say, I don't be 35 or 45. Mr. Kodai, good morning. Good day. Hunting. I was 
Take high five as well. You only need to find yourself one person to dance with. It's not necessary to change partners every night. Or you can have the other night. You just think it's necessary. Here they are. What? A little surprise for you. What is it? It's a genuine leather box. Wait, listen. Isn't that lovely? Uh, well, here, try it. Uh, what else does it do? What do you mean, what else? It's a genuine leather musical cigarette box. And only for 10 and 6. How's that for a bargain? But who will buy it? I can see you're in a very difficult mood today. Let's ask some of the other people around here. Get their honest opinions. Uh, Mr. Kuhn, yes, sir. Will it sell? Oh, uh, I can't imagine why not. Yes, and I can go further to say that this will make music lovers out of cigarette smokers. And cigarette smokers out of music lovers. Thank you, Mr. Koda. Yes, sir. Now, George, I'll bet you 10 6 that we sell the first of these boxes within one hour. I don't want to take your money. Ten, six, one hour, no more, no less. Is it a bet? Uh, well, I am. He's not so confident now. Oh, it's, it's a bet. Ha <laughs> ha You will pay through the nose. You will pay through the nose. <laughs> Good day, madam. May I help you? Very large to come on, Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa cream, certainly, madam. Is that the largest size? Or do you have larger? Uh, we also have a 96. I'd like to see that. Uh, this is a musical cigarette box. The one on the bottle? Uh, certainly. Uh, Mr. Seagull, talk up. Yes, sir. Over here, ma'am. Good day, madam. May I help you? Who do I see about returning a jar of sour face cream? Uh, Mr. Kodai, your customer. Right this way, madam. Oh, good day, madam. May I help you? Oh, no. Oh, we have complete stocks of stock of shampoos, soaps, no, um, bath salts, bath oil, no. hand cream, space cream, oh. nail polish. No, no, yeah. Oh, this week only we have a special. Roses of Italy. Here, let me show it to you. Thursday? Great. I'll stop by tomorrow. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Please call again. Spray a little on your head. No! No? <clears throat> Actually, you see, I'm not going to buy it. Not today. Not going to buy anything. <clears throat> Is uh, Mr. Marichek here? Uh, he's in the back room. May I speak to him, please? Uh, perhaps I can help him. I, I don't think so. Uh, he's quite busy. Well, then I'll wait. Really, I don't mind. I'll just sit here and wait until he's free. May I ask the nature of your business? I'd like to speak to Mr. Marichek personally. All right. Can I get your name? Balish. Amalia Balish. All right, Miss Balish. I'll let him know you're here. Oh, and one more thing, Miss Horvath, um, the one who used to work here, the one who's having a baby, um, she hasn't been replaced yet, has she? Are you looking for a job? <laughs> no. <laughs> well. Five years and eight months. Oh, you were always very satisfied with me. I even have a letter from Mr. Hammerschmidt himself. Oh, it's in here somewhere. Miss Balish is honest, dependable, dedicated. <laughs> dedicated. It's in here somewhere. She has all these qualities which go towards making a highly superior salesperson. I highly recommend her sign Herman Hammerschmidt. Oh, here. Uh, well. I'm sure it's just as you say, but unfortunately, we're not replacing Miss Orbit right now. So, if you'd like to leave your name... Balish. Amalia Balish. And if anything should come up... Well, I'd like to speak to Mr. Marichek, please. I'm afraid if it's only please. about the job... I'm sorry. It just can't be done. What can't be done? At Marichek's, nothing is impossible. Perhaps I know. She wants a job. What? Uh, I knew the business inside and out. I worked in Hammerschmidt. I'm sorry. I, I have a letter from Mr. Hammerschmidt himself. It's out of the question. An honest, dependable, dedicated... Really, George, why can't you handle this sort of 
you without calling me here? I'm a very good sales girl. If you'll excuse me. Really, I am. I'm very good. Aren't these marvelous boxes? And only for ten and six. Can you imagine? What are they for? Oh.
Mr. Manchester. If it weren't for your endearing letters, I'd be flying south before the geese. By the way, have you read War and Peace? Good morning, Mr. Novak. Good morning, Miss Balish. I see you on time today. Congratulations. I'm so sorry to disappoint you. Oh, but I'm not disappointed. Far from it. Let's just call it surprise. <laughs> I don't think you're all approaching tete-a-tete 
tonight at eight. I feel a combination of depression and elation. I want to sleep to wait to late. Three more minutes, two more seconds, ten more hours to go. In spite of all that written, she may not be very smitten, and my hopes may all perhaps collapse. Kaput tonight at eight. I wish I knew exactly how I'll act and what will happen when you die tonight at eight. I know I'll drop the silver weapon, will I spill the water or the wine tonight at eight? Tonight I'll walk right up and sit right down beside the smartest girl in town and then it's anybody's guess. More and more I breathe, less and less. I imagine a I can hear our conversation taking shape tonight. At eight, I'll sit there saying absolutely nothing, or I'll chatter like an ape tonight. At eight, two more minutes, three more seconds, ten more hours to go. I know when this is done, something's ended or begun, and if it goes alright, who knows? I might propose tonight. At eight.
I'm looking for the Christmas decorations and I don't see them. We haven't started them yet, sir. I was going to talk to you about that in a day or two. George, I am sick and tired of you running to me like a baby on every matter that comes up. Mr. Marichek, that's not fair. Oh, George, try to inform all the employees they'll have to stay late tonight. Now, is that clear even to you? Uh, yes, it's perfectly clear, but I'm afraid I can't make it. I have an appointment. Excuse me, George. I can stay tomorrow night, Thursday night, Friday night. That's not necessary. I'm sure we'll get along splendidly without you. That is all. Thank you. That's not all, Mr. Marichek. For the past month, I can't seem to do anything right. What is it? Is it me? Is it you? If my work is bad now, it's been bad for the past 15 years. Why the hell did you wait until now to start telling me? How dare you raise your voice in this shop? Close the idiot! I need to stop that argument before you did something foolish like resigning. I'm not sure I appreciate that. Oh, I didn't do it for you. I did it for me. Who knows? What if your successor in this job takes one look at me and asks himself, what is that clumsy elf doing in this fancy parking room? You are a very good clerk, Madisov. I'm an idiot. But I'm an idiot with a job. How do I remain so calm and cheerful? How do I retain my peace of mind? Let me just explain my rationale. It's all your perspective. Listen. Listen. To an old Hungarian. Miss Ritter! What? Here's the lady's name. 
This is going to be a challenge. Oh, just the name, no telephone number after such a long conversation? Of course not. She already has mine. Oh, while I have you all here, Mr. Marichak wants us to stay late tonight. Why? To put up Christmas decorations, is that clear? I guess so, of course. such thing. How can you say that? What do you think I'm wearing all these new clothes for to trim trees in? I'm only following Mr. Marichek's instructions. Well, I can't say! You are not being very cooperative, Miss Polish. Oh, why did I have to pick this one night? Or did you pick Mr. Novak just because you knew I had an appointment? <sighs> you know, I find it quite depressing that anyone could hate me that much. I do not hate you, Miss Polish. But until you came here, this was a happy, peaceful place. Now the whole atmosphere's changed. Everyone's cranky. Mr. Marichek's on the warpath. That's not my fault. The Mona Lisa's coming out of the wrong end of the tube. And that's not my fault. Is it? You've been filling them. According to your instructions. Well, let's not argue about that right now. Do we have a truce? Anytime, Mr. Novak. After all, you're the one who always starts things. I need a one. You've always resented me. Ever since the first day I got here, when I made you lose that bet to Mr. Marichek for a uh, ten six, wasn't it? To think that anybody could hate me so much just for ten and six. That's ridiculous. Or was it your male pride that was wounded? Hmm? <sighs> because I went in over your head. Men always do seem to resent things like that. I do not resent you, Miss Bollish. Oh, yes, you do. For heaven's sake, I do not resent you. But if I did, could you deny that you hadn't been here for two weeks before you started making very public, very humiliating remarks about me? Only because you were going around calling me Miss A. Molly Abolish. Miss A. Molly Abolish. Do you think I like that? Do you think I like your criticizing my ties, my socks, my fingernails? Much better. That must be the rudest, most difficult, worst tempered girl in the world.
Can you come to the Cafe Imperial with me? It's urgent. Cafe Imperial? She'll be sitting there, all alone, and in front of her there'll be a copy of Anna Karenina with a rose in it. Oh, your lady friend from the letters! And I'll be wearing a rose. Oh, well, that's a very romantic picture, very romantic. Except for one thing. One thing? What am I doing there? <laughs> you, you are going to live with this study, which explains I've been called out of town. And she won't be disappointed? She'd be more disappointed if she saw me how I am tonight. Can you please just do this for me? Of course. Uh, Hold on, we can go. As far as I know, she's already left because she's got time for waiting. Anonymous letters can be difficult to track, but we have checked its contents. As you'll see, we've been following Mrs. Marichek, and there's no doubt. She's been involved with one of your clerks. There's no doubt. I'm sorry, sir. I, I knew all along, I had to be short. She's been going to his apartment every night, number 17 Court Street. Would you care to have us do an investigation into Mr. Cadell? Who? That's his name, Stephen Kodai. But I thought that. Stephen Kodai, number 17 Court Street, second floor, apartment 6. Kodai? But it's, it's just that he hardly knows Mrs. Marichek. And there's another clerk here who's been to our house many, many times. And naturally, I just thought if you'll read the report, sir. Yes, thank you. Will there be anything else? Then I'll be saying good night. Good night, Mr. Kodai. Good night, sir.
to see you, sir. Good to see you, madam. Don't you know we try to preserve a romantic atmosphere? Good to see you again, Mr. Lips. Celebrate? My freedom, Mr. 
and Spanish. Tomorrow's Wednesday, and I can sleep in as late as I like. Mr. Novak, that chair is reserved. Do you want to have one small drink with me? Well, I, I can't. One small farewell drink? Well, here's the Manchex Parking Group, and those who work there, and those who used to work there, and all the customers. And the covers it! Mr. Novak, are you spying on me? Spying? Did you come here to see that I really had a date? And that it wasn't just you using this as an excuse to skip work? Miss Polish, who would I be spying for? Mr. Marichek? Mr. Nova, if you don't leave this table immediately, I will have to call the waiter. Yes, madam. Oh! Oh, there you are. May I give you a word, please? The Cafe Imperial is a rendezvous for lovers. The forum, we try to preserve a romantic atmosphere. But I find that very difficult, madam, when you and your husband insist on fighting right in the middle of it. Can't you argue at home? Listen! I'm not my husband! This, this, this is a business associate. You can talk business somewhere else, please. <coughs> you said you're waiting for someone, someone you've known for a very long time? Mr. Novak, will you leave? Seems awful of a man to keep a woman waiting all alone in such a public place. Will you please leave? Even if he's an old friend, uh, a dear friend. I don't wish to discuss it with you. Novak. What's the name of this tune? My mother used to sing it to me when I was a baby. So did mine. Miss Ballish, do you realize we just found something in common? At one point, we were both infants. <laughs> but I grew up. I think it's called Tango Tragic. What are these all right? Quite impossible. Uh, you see, 
The lady swallowed it. She swallowed it. Do you scream? Dear God, the book. <laughs> Novak, no matter how much you despise me or how unhappy you are, how could you have that? I will never understand you. How could you, Miss Fawlish? You've never really listened to me. You've never really looked at me. How wrong you are, Mr. Novak. I'm looking at you right now. And shall I tell you what I see? A smug, pompous, petty tyrant who's very ambitious and very sure of himself. But I see him ten years from now selling shampoo, and 20 years from now, selling shampoo, and 30 years from now, still selling shampoo, because you want to know what he is, Mr. Novak. Just a not very attractive, not very bright, balding young man with a personality of Python. Mr. Novak, I didn't mean all of those things. Mr. Novak! Don't call him, he'll come back. We're almost closing anyway. But, so soon, but, but I'm waiting for somebody. He'll, he'll have a rose in his little bathroom. Match the one in your book? How late is it? Over two hours. You're a very patient young lady. I've waited for him all my life. That's two hours. The next drink's on us. Go. Thank you. You know, this is a very nice cafe. Thank you. We try to preserve a romantic house.
Polish called. I mean, her mother did, and she won't be coming in today. She's sick. That's everything. Arkad, you are a credit to your profession. Thank you, Mr. Marichek. You know, I'm not afraid of responsibility. In fact, I welcome a lot more. I'll keep it in mind. And I can't help thinking with Christmas just around the corner and all that Christmas shopping, we'll be awfully short-handed at the shop. We'll have to manage. The old more quick would certainly come in handy. What's that? You know someone who wants a job? Mr. Marichek, you've got to stop thinking of me as just a delivery boy. In a suit, with a tie, I look old. And I've been training myself, training hard to be a salesman for two years. Oh, you've been training? I train myself, going shelf by shelf, and I know every item in the store, every tool, jar, box, bottle, counter, and container, where they are, what they cost, what they call. Although it's something you'll have never thought about, Mr. Marichek, try me. You need a man who knows the business inside out, Mr. Marichek, try me. Well, I guess 
There is one excuse. The jealousy of an old man. Jealousy? Poor George still in the dark. I guess you are the only man who ever had an affair without knowing it. An affair? You've been having an affair with my wife. With your wife? With Miss Meritrick? I have all the facts. But it's not true! I know it's not true. I know now. But last weekend, two weeks ago, I did. I can't believe it. Mrs. Meritrick, did you really think that? That's the point. I didn't think. I can't go for it. Well, George, starting now, if you're willing, I'd like you to take over the shop. <laughs> of course, sir. Or at least keep the doors open until you feel good enough to come back. Thank you, George. Oh, and now that you're the boss, if you'd like to give yourself a raise. <laughs> well, I may just have a talk with myself, and if I don't ask for you, I am Major Scranton. <laughs> Perfect, executive. Now, you better get going. We'll be very short handed today, but uh, our pad tells me Miss Bollish is not going to get set. Miss Bollish, what's wrong with her? She's uh, a <coughs> silly. Well, our pad didn't tell me how, but you'll have to vent without her. And another clerk, Mr. Kodai. I want you to fire him. Fire him? Yes. Didn't realize Mr. Kodai was so unsatisfactory. He works hard. But at the wrong place. <laughs> I'm not sure I understand. Well, perhaps if you run for Mrs. Marichek, she'll explain to you. Well, my boy, it looks like I'm a bachelor again, same as you. Perhaps she'll take me out to a cabaret one night. Mr. Marichek. I know, I know, you don't go to cabarets. <laughs> I'll stop by later with the full report. Thank you, my boy, I'll be here. <laughs> I did? As of right now. And I guess you can't call you our hat anymore. I never did get your last name. You do have a last name. Laszlo. Welcome to Marichex, Mr. Laszlo. Mr. Laszlo. Mr. Laszlo. Now you better get going. Alright, you can count on me. And the, I'll get the top ready. Goodbye, Mr. Marichex. Goodbye, Arthur.
Stop the secret yourself. <laughs> it's all about ice cream. It's the best thing in the world when you're sick. It's from Lindner's. <laughs> My mother works at Lindner's. She might have waited on you. A small stout woman? Oh no. The image of me, everyone said. Only oh, much. Here's all into it. Oh, I guess I better cry in the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> Why cry at all? How oh, little you understand, Mr. Novak. I'm like a rag doll, and somebody has kicked out the stuff. Uh, but you'll fill up again soon, good as new. I'm looking at a very disillusioned girl, Mr. Novak. Miss Polish, you know, I will never forgive myself for what I did at the cafe last night. I must have been drunk. But strangely enough, you were right, Mr. Novak, when you guessed I never met the man I was waiting for. He was just someone who'd been writing letters to me. But glorious letters! <laughs> and he never showed up. I really don't believe me! I feel very responsible. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't your fault, Mr. Novak. Just 
think of all the immortal works of art written by old men, bald men, fat men, indigestion <laughs> and terrible tempers. But somewhere deep inside, they have the magic in that. That right there is a glory beyond estimation. You put it very well, Miss Bosch. I go very well. I feel marvelous. Oh, thank you, Mr. Novak. Thank you for my life. Oh, I'm going to write to him this very minute. Oh, but I won't mention it, of course, since that might be embarrassing. Oh, yes, I appreciate that. Well, I guess I'd better be going back to the shop. Mr. Novak, before you leave, may I tell you something quite sincerely? Yeah. Um, I like you, Mr. Novak. Really? <laughs> I like you. Thank you. Have you finished that occurring yet? Oh, yes. A long time ago. Oh, so did I. Yet, it's remarkable how it stays with me. You know, every platform, every station platform with the train puffing in, is Anna's platform, wherever it may be. And sometimes I can see her, actually see her, come out of the crowd and slowly walk to her death. I've even tried to stop her a few times, but she always vanishes into the smoke and sea. How odd, Mr. Novak. How very odd. Oh, you know, one of these letters, so I wish I could show it to you. You mean, dear friends had a similar experience? More than once. Well, see you in the morning. In the morning.
didn't like her, I couldn't stand her. I couldn't stand her, I wouldn't have to. I never knew her. But now I do. She loves me, and I'm to my basement. I love it, knowing that she loves me. She loves me, true, she doesn't show it. How could she, when she doesn't know it? Yesterday she loved me, now today she likes me. And tomorrow, tomorrow. I'm speechless, for I mustn't tell her. It's wrong now, but it won't be long now. For my love discovers that she and I are lovers. Imagine how surprised she's found to be. And like some adolescent, I like to scrub on everyone I see. She loves me. She loves me. Next 
thing I know, I'm sipping hot chocolate and telling my troubles to Paul, whose tender brown eyes kept sending compassionate looks. A trip to the library has made a new girl of me, for suddenly
Mr. Laszlo. Laszlo? Why Laszlo? It's my last name. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Please call again. Do call again, madam. Well, Miss Ritter, I would like to introduce you to our newest clerk, Mr. Laszlo. It's true. Ask Mr. Marichet. Oh, our hat, how wonderful. What's wonderful? I'm a clerk, starting right now, a clerk. Oh, so, imagine that. Stephen got out and replaced by a delivery boy. Replaced? Yes, our bad, I'm resigning. I wouldn't stay here for another day. You couldn't, you've been fired. Oh, all right, think that if you please. But, one of these days, that door will close for the very last time. And then you'll just take a walk over to Hammersmith. Why, it's closed. Only temporarily for renovations, because they have a new owner over there, and his name is Stephen Kodai. Some uh, owner. <laughs> Nevertheless, it's true. <gasps> Ilona, you believe me, don't you, darling? Oh, of course I do. Here's your down payment. Oh, Sherry. <laughs> Thank you. 
glad you enjoyed this. Uh, will you be riding the bus for me then as well? Oh, yes, sir. May I walk up to the bus stop? I'd like that, Mr. Nova.
Uh, George, what do you say to a gala dinner? We'll go to some fancy restaurant. A letter for that. Mr. Manchin, I did not do that. But, but you weren't expecting me, I understand. Actually, I've been invited by Miss Polish. Oh, well, in that case, don't give it another thought. It's not that important. Oh, it's him! He's here! Oh, he's here! It's Miss Rivers' friend! Oh, he's an optometrist. <laughs> Much better than Mr. Kodai, I'll say that. I love the way he walks. Oh, and that hat, that coat. Is he rich? I don't know. He has dimples. Well, that settles it. Tonight, when he asks me to marry him, I'll say yes. Tonight? Oh, well, I have no idea. Neither does he. Well, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Good evening. For the champagne, but my wife and children are waiting on me, and her sister, and her children, and God knows who else. Merry Christmas! <laughs> are Patrick busy tonight? No, sir. Oh, yes, you are. You're going to letters. Letters? What is it? George, our father and I are going out for a nap with that. Merry Christmas, sir. Merry Christmas? Did you know that? Merry Christmas, our father. Tell me, our father, is there anything special you want for Christmas? Well, it's too much to ask for, but what is it? What I'd like more than anything else, I guess, would be a motorcycle. You're right, boy, you won't get it. <laughs> oh, kid, let me help you with those. Of course. Oh. A, a cigarette box? Oh, I know you hate them, Mr. Novak, but I'd rather like them than I thought as a present for your friend. What if he's not a smoker? He likes music. And it's just a box. You know, as far as I don't hate these boxes nearly as much as I used to. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't mind running one myself. You wouldn't? If only to remind me of the first day you came here. Remember? How can I forget? Uh, what kind of box is it, madam? It's a, a candy box. And it's functional. <laughs> I was so terrified. I was so terrified. Oh, you were so awful. Did I genuinely sound like that? You sounded irresistible. As a matter of fact, I remember thinking, that's the kind of girl I could almost fall in love with. But, but you, were, you were so awful. I know. But you never said anything? Well, how could I? I knew how you felt about me. But you didn't, Mr. Lamar. Truly, you didn't, because. You see, I was attracted to you. More than attracted, actually. As awful as I was. What a shame you never spoke up. And you? And that's what my friend. I am so sorry about last night. It was a night that I never knew.